Can you watch that? Yes. Huh? Sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was another plus for me because in Singapore, when I grew up here, I was always considered a giant. I was taller than my friends. I'm the tallest in my family. And then next to him, I'm petite. <laughs> so that was definitely a plus. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lina Ravindran Green. And I'm Barry Ravindran Green. And we've been married now for 32 years. 32 years. Yes. Yeah. I went to a Baha'i fireside where she was supposed to talk. Then I heard her voice and I went like, hmm, I need to find out more about Lina. Then the next time I saw her, she was giving a talk in the Washington DC Baha'i Center and she was teaching about how Indian dance is a spiritual prayer. And I just needed to get her phone number. <laughs> and? <laughs> and I got her phone number and I called her up and she goes like, who are you? <laughs> I had no idea who no, I was. I have to put this in a context, okay? I <laughs> had never wanted to get married in my life because um, I grew up seeing how, you know, a lot of girls especially were independent and then they get married, they have to like cook clean for the husband and stuff. So I decided at 17 years old that I didn't want to get married. And so at the time when I met him, I was still, I was already in my late 20s and still convinced that I was not going to get married. So that's why I like never really remember where he asked me for my number because he told me he wanted me to speak at a Baha'i fireside, not that he wanted my number. Okay, that part he missed out. <laughs> and then he called me and we did end up talking for about three hours on the phone. And then my sister was also getting married at that time. And so he was very helpful. He kept, he had a car, I didn't have a car. So he kept offering to drive us around and help us. And so in many ways you should say thanks to my sister. She was kind of like my chaperone there. And translator. I, and translator. <laughs> because me coming from, you know, one side of the planet and Linus from the other side of the planet, she would do facial emotions and expressions and things like that. And I would be like confused. And so I'd look over at Lethika who'd been living in Canada and Lethika would like confirm, not confirm, do things like that. So, yes, so. Yeah, and then over time we, you know, we just developed as really good friends. And uh, I came to Singapore on a trip and I realized I missed the conversations with him. So that's the time when we started having conversations of what this friendship was about and realized that we actually did love each other mm -hmm. very much. So we went through, in Baha'i faith, we need to ask parental consent. So we wrote a parent letter to our parents and they gave us consent and then we got married in 1992 in June. So Barry was literally the first person, guy that I had ever met in my life that didn't have an ego in the sense that I didn't feel that me will stop existing after marriage. In fact, I felt with him someone who was very supportive and very encouraging of me being me. But to be honest with you, I gave him at least 10 reasons why he should not marry me. I said, I'm not your typical wife. I'm not going to cook and clean for you. I'm not going to give up my job when the children come. So I gave him all these reasons and I was literally hoping he would say, no, this is too much. I don't want it. But he said, okay. <laughs> so fortunate for, for me, my mom, the way she raised my brother and I is she didn't want us to go off and get married to have some women take care of us, right? That says that's not the reason to get married. You know, that's the wrong reason to get married. So when we were like uh, preteens, we had to clean the house and clean and cook and do the laundry and iron and sew and all, all that sort of stuff. So uh, when Lana was going like, I'm not doing any of these, I go like, okay, yeah. Yeah, and no I have thanked deal. his mother for that, for raising him right. Yeah. Uh, the list is pretty exhaustive. You know, there's a, there's, there's a lot of things. <laughs> I think one over the last, you know, you know, we've been together 32 years married, 33 years together. Um, it's just, uh, I've always been looking to have like a partner, equal partner. The Baha'i concept of marriage is you're trying to do two equal wings together in the institution of the marriage. It is hard in this world because we have so much baggage from you know male chauvinism and that sort of you know expectations and it's both on the male and female side right you know women is as much of holding women back as men holding women back so i've always been kind of you know could i find a partner who wants to work on that how do we work on that and um line has been like you know 
just moving back and forth, figuring this out over and over and over again. We push it's each other stopped. as well. I think the Baha'i writings talk about how marriage is a fortress of well-being within which you can do your spiritual growth and transformation. And I think what is key with us is that we do push each other and then we strive to be better. Yeah, never over. Mm -hmm. In the sense that we're always trying to figure out, okay, what's the next thing we work on? What's the next adventure? Mm -hmm. What's the new thing we have to uncover to work on? Trauma from when we were kids together and new things we're going to learn and how to support each other. And the first like few years I think was difficult because of the different cultures as well yeah. coming together and trying to understand, you know, um, how we operate, how I use a lot of British English, he uses American English, so sometimes we didn't understand each other <laughs> as well. So there was a lot of adjusting to do. Um, there were more moments of frustration about mm -hmm. like, you know, why, why did we do this, so to speak. But we always communicated and I think that was the key. We're very direct with each other. I think some people who, uh, even my sister says when she <laughs> listens to us talk, I might seem very rude or he might, uh, and it, like in Asian standards, it might be considered very rude because I'll question or I'll challenge, right? But uh, then he responds and then we discuss what's the best path forward. And that is something I never thought I would get, right? Because here the culture is more compliance and you listen to the husband, don't challenge it, make him look good, you know, make him shine and stuff like that. Uh, so it allows me to just be me. I don't have to change who I am. And that was to me very key as well, you mm -hmm. know, in the marriage, yeah. We've been pretty balanced. I mean, it's, it's you know, God, God's grace with it. I mean, there's professionally, I am in a position because of Lana and her connections, you know, than I could never dream of because of her, what she did in the uh, telecommunications world. And then at the same time, her, me in the internet world, because, you know, in the early part of the life, I was doing a lot of inter building the internet. She was doing a lot of, you know, telecommunications. And, uh, you know, we would just go around. She would come into my professional area because we would interact a lot together uh, intentionally to do that, do projects together. And then um, we were always kind of known as like this pair um, working together. Um, and, and we so, also take turns in a way. Like there are times yeah. in our career where my career comes first and then he steps back and helps with the kids and be the supportive parent at home. And then there are times it makes more sense that his career takes precedence. And so we, we're constantly taking back turns forth. back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. That's always been a matter of consultation. And it's always, it's, it's putting us first, right? In a sense that like some people would say like, oh, uh, my priority in life is my career and my job and I gotta go, you know, do this very materialistic sort of approach. Um, for us, it's always been, you know, how are we making an impact into the world together? I mean, Lina and I have always come from a context of our compass has been, um, how do we help the world? It's one of the things that led us to the Baha'i faith is how do we help the world? Because it combines the spirituality and our, our desire to help. So part of that is together as a couple, then together as a family when our two children arrived, and then within the broader family, then within society. So we've always been, it's again, the analogy, two wings of a bird, sometimes, one wing needs more exercise than the other exercise, but you don't fly unless everybody, it, it's equal. Mm. It did help that we came from similar professional backgrounds as well. So we actually were able to help each other's career as well. But we always had that mentality of serving humanity. So we're constantly like when we make choices of where we put our energy, we always ask ourselves, how is this helping make the world a better place? So our kids, I think, sometimes got frustrated because you drag them around to different parts of the world They're like you're always trying to save the world you know but thankfully we've instilled that in our kids in many ways too so they are themselves serving in different capacities on their own as well mm -hmm.